do you really never get laid? <laughs> and are you really broke? <laughs> and then they both they both just looked at me, waiting for an answer. <laughs> and so I go, let me ask you guys something. <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you think if I could make up any character? <laughs> Do you think those would be the attributes I would choose? <laughs> For three million people to think about me. It's all true. So I do live in Alaska. I am divorced. I know we talk about it. We talk some smack about my ex-wife on the show, but I'll let you guys know, those are just jokes based on facts. <laughs> okay, so just, to, just to clear the air. We do communicate though, if you're if you're divorced and you have children, you must communicate with your ex. That's important for the kids. You gotta put your ego aside. She actually texted me right before I came on stage. I'm not even kidding, it says uh screw you. It's uh <laughs> Yeah, we still communicate just like we did when we were together. <laughs> Do you know a lot of times on Gut Felt, if you uh, really pay, pay attention to me, I'll give you some like inside scoops about Gut Felt as we go through the show tonight. But a lot of times, if you look at me, you, you'll notice I don't know uh, what they're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna learn on the job as we go. I've learned a lot though, I've learned a lot. We did a story as a teacher who is non-binary, and I was like, I don't know what that means, I don't want to say binary. Let me research it. So I went to Google and I typed in non-binary definition enter. And it said gender fluid. And I was like, okay, what, what if you don't know what the answer is? <laughs> So I typed in gender fluid, definition, enter. It was like non binary. <laughs> oh no, I'm okay. calling the loop of not knowing things. <laughs> gender fluid means I learned that you could be like a woman, but then you could be a man if you want, and you can even switch back, switch again, switch back. Terrifying. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what it meant. I thought. I always thought gender fluid was why we grab a towel after sex. I thought it was. <laughs> Big laugh, right? I was feeling really 
good about myself with a big laugh, and I'm, I'm, I'm walking home, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. And so I call up Erica, that's my fiance, and I go, hey, um, remember we weren't gonna tell anybody that we got engaged? I, I, I uh, made a mistake, I said, I'm gonna call it, I have a joke, I couldn't help it, it just came out, I'm sorry. And she goes, I have not told anybody. And I go, you have four hours. <laughs> So we told everybody, we thought it'd be fun, we told everybody that we knew, it was like 100 people. We didn't tell them what I was going to do, but we told them, hey, tune in at 10 p.m. to Gutfeld, that Jamie's going to say some kind of cool news about our family. That's what we told everybody. We listened to a fun way to let everyone know. So that night, it was about one minute to 10, and my phone rings, and it's great Gutfeld, and I answer it, it's part of my country. He goes, hey, I really, I really thought it was cool that you announced your engagement on the show. And I go, yeah, dude, of course. He goes, bad news is the show tonight has been preempted. He goes, one of these protesters at Columbia University, the show will not air tonight, but we'll do our best to air it tomorrow. And I go, okay, that's cool. And we talk for another 15 minutes, and I am, I'm like, oh, that'll be fun. And then I remember, we told a hundred people to tune in the Fox. So there's a hundred people around the country. Just watching the Columbia protesters. <laughs> just looking for me. <laughs> you think he's in one of those tents? <laughs> so if you saw that, that was the next day. It wasn't actually that day. I, those Columbia protesters really annoyed me. and I didn't, I didn't like them before they messed, messed up my show. And um, I think I'm a little bit biased because my ex-wife, she was a big protester, and it was mostly during sex. <laughs> <laughs> she had little chants, you know, like, what do we want? Not your penis. <laughs> when do we want it? We don't want it. We just have to it. <laughs> yeah, respectfully, I granted her the ceasefire she was asking for. <laughs> I'm kind of in love though, it's annoying. I found out that um, if you want, if you, when things are bad, all my friends are like, yeah, tell me how shitty your life is. They're excited to talk to me. And when you're happy and in love, just straight to voice. <laughs> I met this, so this girl is a, uh, I, I don't have like a super, I, I graduated from college, but I don't have like a big, crazy education. So I'm always very impressed when I meet people with jobs that I think I could never qualify for and I could never do. But when I met her, I go, I go, what do you do for a job? And she goes, oh, I'm a doctor. And I was like, wow. And I go, well, what, um, what type of doctor are you? And she goes, oh, I'm, I'm a women's health gynecologist. And I go, that is so crazy. That's, that's what I would have chosen. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird coincidence. <laughs> That's both of our favorite specialties. <laughs> <laughs> like, she does that, though, I was happy that that was her, you know, her passion. I was just like, man, you mentioned she was a, like, urologist, you know, <laughs> the penises, I don't know. I just don't need that kind of competition. You know, I'm, like, I'm a fairly confident guy, but I just don't know if I need every day her going, man, I could have had that one. <laughs> Do we have anybody by any chance in the crowd that's it? Do we have any doctors? Anybody a doctor out there? <laughs> you know what? I feel like someone's full of shit. I feel like <laughs> I'm almost positive. I'm like, after the show, someone's gonna come up and be like, oh, I'm, a, I'm this doctor, and I would, I'll be like, you know what? You fucked me. <laughs> you don't have to say, you know. Is there one? No, I feel like it's in this area. <laughs> What about anybody in the medical profession? Anybody just overall medical? Okay, they're big. It's a, it's a powerful whistle. It's a powerful whistle for somebody in the medical group. Do you? What do you do in medicine? You just switch whistle. Whistle for help. You know, these are I can't even whistle like that. So jealous of that whistle. Did you? Um, 
did you learn, did you practice the whistle? I've always had a question about guys that can whistle loudly. Is that what I Because honestly, if you don't whistle so loud, there's three taxis and a waitress outside the store. There's three canaries. What did you do in medicine with a whistle person? Whistle person. By the way, I can't see. Quick disclaimer. I can't see anything. Like, I have bad eyesight. No, I went too long. I went to the last graphics class once. Your wife's doctor. I fucking told you guys. <laughs> Is she not here though? She's not here. You're there? I fucking knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I'm never wrong. I get this sense. I wish I had this sick sense of people lying to me when I was there. Well, that's cool. I'll leave you guys a little bit, but do you mind if I ask one question and I'll just move right now? What type of doctor are you? What do you do? What type of doctor? Psychiatric nurse practitioner. Psych psychiatric nurse practitioner. That's gotta be, that's gotta be fucking tough. Is that tough to, is it tough? I feel like it'd be tough to every once in a while not go like, hoo hoo, hoo hoo. Because you can't. Yeah, it's like, oh, I know. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes when they're writing, I feel like they're writing, what the fuck is this for? I just feel like you're just trying to write and stop and try not to say it out loud. Grocery list. That's cool. Thank you for that. Was, that was it. You're done. Thank you for talking. That's the whole thing. Thank you. I feel like after my set, that woman might give me a prescription. <laughs> I saw some shit up there I wasn't, I didn't like. <laughs> I do a bad accent though. I went to, I went to Lens Crafters Glasses and I gave my prescription. And I go, you know, do you guys think you can make these glasses in less than an hour? And the lady goes, we won't even be done making fun of you. you know what I'm <laughs> That's how shitty your eyes are. So this is Stephen Lens Crafters, it's a Jimmy John's. All right? so, <laughs> That's a cool job. I don't think I could, um, I was never big with the ladies, I was never, you know, I never had a, like a one night stand, you know, just in, on principle, I didn't do it because they, they wouldn't let me. And, uh, yeah, so I was standing, you know. Remember the Me Too movement? I was not involved in that. No, a couple years ago, I actually got me neither. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what I wouldn't bang him, I should be either. <laughs> you can't get in trouble for that, but it feels bad. <laughs> I don't think I could be a doctor. I certainly don't think I could be a um, gynecolo gynecologist. I just don't think I could handle it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because usually when I see a woman, you know, it's going the other way. Like, hey, get back here. I'm really taking it. I'm leaving it. I'm taking it somewhere else. They're out of here, you know? Bringing them in. Here, I'm this for you. What a late that would be like, Mr. Lisso, your 10 o'clock vagina's here? Or your 10 o'clock? All day long, just a parade. A parade. I would go to more parades if it was that type of parade. I know we don't really like parades, but that one sounds fun. That sounds like one I would go to. I wonder, do you think, I feel like, you know, gynecology school? I bet there's like a whole year where they where they where they just teach you to keep your shit together. <laughs> you know, there's a whole class where they're just like, okay, today we're gonna we're gonna learn how to act like you've been there. Okay, we're gonna just act like here's how you get rid of an erection. What you do is you know, I, I would probably get fired for then. One hour. <laughs> Be a guy I just don't think I can handle it. Honestly. What if a beautiful woman comes in as your first patient, just a gorgeous woman, and she starts taking her pants off, and you start taking your pants off? <laughs> like, I am so sorry, I forgot where I was. I forgot, I, you know, I forgot my training. hard because sometimes your body makes noises without you even being aware of it. But if you're like, okay, let's take a look here. Fuck so, yeah. <laughs> I'm 
great service, very unprofessional. Okay. Anyway, to be clear, I know it's a compliment. Uh, so you really take care of things down there. But, uh, it reminds me of my neighbor. His yard, he's got bushes, shit like ducks and stuff. I don't know if you can do that yourself, if you guys come in once a week or whatever you have to I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and walk myself over to HR if I'm calling it. I'm going to have to put my shit in the box. I just, uh, Alright, man, and what do you do if you, you know, when the first one walks in and it's not a good one? I know, and you go like, okay, let's just take a, ah! Oh, God, woo! I was very unprofessional. I should not have screamed in terror when I was in this. That's my bad. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Ah! I'm going to bring someone else in here. I should have probably... My colleague who's been doing this for a while, he loves scary movies. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go ahead and walk myself over to HR. <laughs> 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 now that I'm taking this doctor, I'm much healthier. Uh, about a month ago, she goes, um, it's time for you to get a colonoscopy. And I go, you know what? I don't know a lot about medicine, but I do know that I'm 49. It's 49 at the time. I go, you don't have to get a colonoscopy until you're 50. So I'll just wait until I'm 50. And so it's all the same to you. You guys know. She goes, oh, no, they changed it. They changed it to 45. And I go, well, they can't. No, you can't do that. <laughs> just change it. You also can't change it when I'm in the window of getting out of time. <laughs> I'm not doing it. And she goes, what's your problem? What's your hesitation with getting a colonoscopy? I go, just mainly what it is. <laughs> My problem is exactly what it is. You know? <laughs> just the steps of it. You, you know me. You know, I like to have my butt. You know, I like to have it put away. Um, during the colonoscopy, it's out in the open. It's right there. It's right there. And, it, and, and it's, it's ever, and if I'm not mistaken, that's why everyone's come here today. Because of my butthole, and people are certainly like a drain. And then uh, one guy has a light, someone else has a camera. What's the love about this situation? I don't know if they're streaming it, I don't know if it's recording it. I think I was driving a car inside my body, and they're playing on the end of it. And like, oh, fuck yeah, watch out. Whoops. Um, She goes, well, one of the benefits of dating a doctor, she goes, I'm friends with a lot of doctors. I happen to know the best colonoscopy doctor in the country. This man has never made a mistake. It's been his passion ever since he was very bad. And um, I go, yeah, I got a whole new set of problems here and that. And I, I want someone that's good at their job, but I don't want a, a guy that's having the time of his life. Because, you know, to be more transactional. <laughs> so I said I'm going to go get it done, and unfortunately this doctor guy, he knows that I'm a comedian. Which a lot of times in situations like that, it's better if people don't know that. Because sometimes people try to be funny, and there's places where it's okay to be funny, and then there's places where it's not that not a great time to be funny. And so he goes, go into this room and put on this hospital gown. So I go, okay. And I put it on. I've never once put on a hospital gown and, and been like, yep, this is for sure the way it goes. <laughs> There's always a little uncertainty there, you know? So I put it on, and I'm looking at the there's mirrors on each side, and I can see in the back mirror, I can see my ass. <laughs> and I go, well, this tracks. This makes sense. It's an ass. It's an ass procedure. I'm not exactly happy about it, but I get it. I look in the front. My penis is showing you guys. I just And I just say, I'm not having a very good penis day. It's just not a good day. It's just like, I think he's a nervous or something. Or like it's a very sterile environment, but it looked like, it honestly looked like someone went out of town and forgot to tell someone to water their plants. It looked like that. It looked like you'd be like, you know what, let's just throw this one away and start over. There is no saving this plant. So I take it off and I turn it around and I put it out. Same problems. I can see the ass. I can see the penis. I don't like this. And I hear a knock at the door. 
and the guy goes, hey, the colonoscopy gown is different than a regular hospital gown. It's going to feel weird, but just come out. We put you right under a sheet, and so it's just like the way it goes. Come on out. So I come out, and I'm covering up. And, um, because it was a bad penis day. I'm covering up. Hey, hey, get there. I'm like, hey, what are we doing? Let's go. It was a bad day. It was covering up. And, um, my girlfriend kind of looks at me. And then she looks at him and she goes, what do you have him wearing? And the guy goes, I'm just fucking around. I cut a hole. Because I never thought he'd walk out here wearing it. I was like, oh, I bet you lose your license for that, okay? I bet there's not even a rule for that specifically because they don't think anyone would do it. So now I'm rattled. I'm rattled. Because I'm like, what is this guy capable of? And then a comedy bit that resulted in me showing him my penis on his worst day. So I go back in, I put on the regular gown. I'm, I'm, I'm rattled. My nerves are, are fried. And so I get into the, the bad thing. We're talking about the anesthesia they give you. And they give you that powerful anesthesia. And I don't know, you ever had something wrong your whole life? For 49 years, I thought that local anesthesia meant that they got it from around here. I know this comes in general. I thought they go, hey, we spent all the last year and went to a farmer's market. That's what we're looking for your allergies. That's not what it means. So the other guy goes, I know you're nervous. Make this easy for you. He goes, you got a saline drip right now in the IV. I press a button, it turns into a very powerful anesthetic. You're going to turn towards me, give me a thumbs up, and I'm down from 10. You won't even feel the camera going in, and you'll just wake up and it'll be done. He goes, You think you can handle it? I go, I'm ready. He goes, Okay. So he presses the button, anesthesia goes in, I turn towards him, give him a thumbs up, I go, 10, not. And when I turn around and look at him, he's, you got, he's coming towards me, holding just a regular camera. Just coming in. <laughs> yeah, and it has one of those lenses on the end of it. Like for wildlife photography? And he's coming at me and I'm like, what the? And I black out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you lose your license if you do stuff like this. He's doing comedy bits till the very end of the story. <laughs> so then it's like, no time passes. I, I just wake up. Well, at least it's over, but then I feel weird. You ever wake up early for work before your alarm and you're like, something it's off? Feels like it's too early? I woke up in the middle of my colonoscopy, right in the middle of it. And, for, and I, so, in my defense, drugs all through my body. I'm already super anxious because I'm four years late because of this place. And in front of me, there's a giant screen, and it's like a dark tunnel. It's like this dark, swirling tunnel. And in the back of the tunnel, there's a light. It's a little light. You know, they tell you to die. You see a tunnel and a light. <laughs> and for a couple seconds, I actually thought I was dying. And I had all these thoughts. I was like, dude, why do they not use national anesthesia? And, like, so, so, so. and so they were responsible. They were like, take a chance and let the founder of anesthesia. Because I had all these thoughts. Like, why did I? Why would I lie to the anesthesia? I was just about my weight. Why would I have done that? <laughs> and I black out. I wake up again. And so my, um, Eric always tells me when I'm in front of people, she goes, to give them a little public service something. So I'll do it. If you need a colonoscopy, get it done. It's not just for you. It's for the people you love. Okay? And it's also for your doctor, if he's into that type of shit. Because sometimes during the colonoscopy, they can actually find something that can save your life. You wouldn't even have to go back. It happened to me, and I'm forever grateful to the woman that loves me for having me go in. They, they, when they were in there, they removed a, uh, it was a 7-Eleven hot dog. <laughs> yeah, and I guess it reassembled itself. <laughs> Planet Fitness. So what happened was there was a Planet Fitness 
in Fairbanks, Alaska. That's where I live. That's my gym. And what happened was there was a man who identifies as a woman, but he was still saving up. <laughs> I'm going to be adding some context to the story that may or may not be true. But I feel like he's probably saving up. You know, if you need to get rid of your penis, you probably skip a cruise. You know, but, uh, so anyway, he's in the bathroom and he's shaving, and, and the penis was showing. Which, that's weird, too. He was probably having a good penis day. That's what I could do. And so this woman went in, she was with her daughter, and she was like, whoa. And so she went to the front desk and she goes, hey, um, you got, we need paper towels in the women's room, and also there's a guy with his penis out. I don't know if anyone remembers what happened in this story. They revoked her membership. They told us, you don't have the right to you know, determine who can go in what bathroom. We don't care about your daughter. We're revoking your membership. And a lot of people are upset about this, but I took from this, holy shit, this lady found a way to cancel your Planet Fitness <laughs> So again, if you have a plan of fitness membership and you want to cancel it, just go up to the front desk and go, hey, got to just peace out. The women's locker room, thank you very much. Peace out. I'm out of here. <laughs> so I love doing, um, I love doing Bethel. I love learning a lot. I, um, you lose when I came out here, I didn't get my pronouns. I don't know. I don't really, I don't really, I don't, I don't do pronouns. I feel like it's a, I feel like pronouns, when you say your name and your pronouns, I feel like it's a lot of information to give someone that you just met. Like, what if I just met you guys, right? We just, we're just meeting for the first time. What if I came up and I said, hi, my name is Jamie, you know, I'm a he, him. <laughs> what am I saying? What am I really saying? That's like me coming out here and going, hi, my name is Jamie, I love vaginas. <laughs> I love it, I love vaginas. I like to put my penis in them, I love vaginas. <laughs> Penises I do not like very much. I do not like penises very much. I do not like my penises. I don't like them. It's weird. I like my penis, but they all have my penis. I just feel like that. That's a very. That's a very in-depth hello. That's a lot of information. We do a lot of fun stories. I mean, my favorite story ever. I wrote down some of my favorite. Um, my favorite Godfather story. Well, some of the jokes that I don't get to do because you can't say certain things on television. So sometimes I save those up for the live show. You know? And um, one of my favorite stories I've ever done. So by the way, on the show, we do uh, the most serious stories are in the A block. That's like at the very beginning of the uh, show, the A block. And the very serious stories are about war and immigrants and murder. And a lot of times if you look at me during those segments, I'm fucking sweating. <laughs> There's been a lot of funny shit about those types of stories. But in the E block, it's the weird random stories. I always get so excited. Some of my favorite E block stories, um, this one time we did a story where there was this guy who broke up. He was a pretty average looking guy. He was dating a Brazilian supermodel. They put a picture of her up on the screen. They go, wow, that's a hot girl. And he broke up with her. It was in the news. He broke up with her for farting in bed. <laughs> this is a new story. This man broke up with his Brazilian supermodel girlfriend for farting in bed. And if you guys have seen this picture, you got, you got, I, will, I wouldn't break up with her if she only communicated. You're <laughs> <laughs> like, you need to get in school? For her? You know what, text me. There was this, um, this guy, I mean, this happened in Fairbanks, Alaska. A guy broke into one of those um, sex stores and he stole a he stole a 20-pound dildo. And he was on the run from police. They couldn't find him. And I was like, man, let's just let him go. There's nothing we're gonna be able to do to him, and he's not already planning to do it himself. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein's Little Black Book. They were, that was a bit too much of a loser. I like to yeah, keep it down. Let's take it down, man. Jeffrey, I think that guy bought it. You know, 
auction. I think it's going to so they were auctioning it off. I think it was going for like it was going for like a thousand bucks. And um, Greg asked me if I had a little black book, and you would be surprised knowing my history, but I actually do have a little black book. It's, it's got a lot of entries. I, I, it's all the women that I've slept without. <laughs> no, I never had a little black book. Until when I was married, I had little blue balls, but I never had. <laughs> I think I did that when I should be in the edited. <laughs> the other day we were talking about um, Ghostbusters 2, that movie. The director w was blaming, um, he was blaming like conservatives and Trump supporters that Ghostbusters 2 did not do very well because it was like an all-women cast. And he blames Trump and his supporters for his movie not doing well. I don't know if you saw this movie, it was not a good movie. I actually walked out of this movie and I was watching it on an airplane. I was like, dude, if I want to see four women wrestle with a ghost, I'll rewatch Biden on the View. Oh, 
Oh man, okay, there's some fun we got. Did you guys hear that? Nobody take their pills. Put the pills where they are. Most of the time. Um, we did, I think we had a story about like tattoos or something, and Greg asked if I would ever get a tattoo. And um, if, if, I got, if I got a face tattoo, if I had to get one, it would, it would say, um, I didn't get the job, did I? <laughs> I used to actually own a ta tattoo shop which specialized in people that had gotten tattoos of the names of people that they were in love with, that they had broken up. I specialized. We didn't um, do tattoo removal. We were just really good at writing his bitch. <laughs> So, so this, this next story, um, much like when uh, what the delivery person that receives the lunch order for the cash of the view says, uh, there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> that view show, you can actually. So first of all, I can't even watch the view because I have a smart TV, it won't play it. <laughs> for a room of the view, and then you open your curtains, and you know, Joey Behar was up in the middle. <laughs> I had one I really wanted to tell you guys about. Um, oh, did you hear there was a story that they want to start calling, um, they want to start calling women, like, birthing people? Have you heard that one? Yeah. They don't call them women anymore? Did you guys, this is 100% sure, I almost wish someone would yell it out because you won't believe it. Does anybody know what they want to call guys? <laughs> penis owners. <laughs> that is not a joke, they want to call guys penis owners. Isn't that a terrible idea? That's a terrible idea. And also, honestly, like my son just turned 16, I don't even know if he'll be able to own his own penis and buy his economy. <laughs> side of politics you're on, everyone as an American should be very, very happy that Trump's okay after that assassination yeah. attempt. Yeah. 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 And whatever your feelings are, no one can tell me that Trump is not a badass after seeing what happened that day. Yeah. 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 Do you know the part I'm talking about? The other part about when he gets shot in the ear? Because he turned his head at the last minute, or he would be dead, right? So it's a wild story. The Secret Service climbs on top of him, and then there's still shots being you know, fired, there's noise in the background, and Trump goes, grab my shoes. <laughs> you guys, how expensive are Trump's shoes? <laughs> he was like, okay, my skull's okay. Oh shit, where are my shoes? I would not have been that cool. I feel like I would have been like, hey, did you guys grab the uh, shit that fell out of my pants? When I was like, you didn't have to bring it to me, just get it out the stage. Some of those men and women were human shields that day. They got right in front of Trump and put their hands up and put their bodies in. That's a loyal, that's a loyal father of kind of loyal team. Yeah, I need my jobs, you know. Like even working for Greg, if one day he was like, hey, you get to do jokes but also be a human shield, I'd be like, I don't think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> human shield is a lot to ask, you know. I think I would, I would counter with, what if, what if I just brought a shield from home? <laughs> do I need to be the shield? Is that important to you? That my life is in danger? Okay, I'll bring a shield. I'm 
They were talking to Biden the other day. We haven't seen him in a while. And then this reporter got Biden outside the White House, which since um, in the last couple of years they've been calling it because uh, of Biden, they're going to the White House with drama spots. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why he's not allowed to fly on a regular airplane? Because he always has more than three ounces of liquid in his diaper. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> just, just don't you facts. Um, but they caught him outside his house and they get the outside the White House and they go, where you been, Joe? And he said, the Secret Service has been keeping me inside because they're worried about an assassination attempt. I was like, I think you're good. <laughs> I don't think you're very high up on the target priority list. <laughs> so I'm like, he just, Joe is lucky. He never has to worry about an assassination. Like, if somebody wanted Joe Biden dead, they would, they would just wait. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't throw your life away. Just, 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 just give it a minute. Joe that had his ear shot, you know? I feel like he would have gone to the ground, secret church would have piled on top of him, and I feel like that would have been yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was a bullet that would be piling on top of him. Like, he was here a minute ago. I don't know, it's just a diaper and bone dust. I'm not sure. <laughs> Does anybody have a favorite um, a favorite story that we uh, that we did? Anybody remember like a fun um, fun story? We have a favorite. Canadian the Canadian shop teacher is a great one. <laughs> the Canadian shop teacher was amazing. I think that person was doing a joke or something. Because when I, that was, I, well, every time they showed a picture of her, I was like, get those away from that band song. That is like, <laughs> Those giant boobs. That she, she's been out of the shop. Teacher. That's like when you see a shop teacher with like three fingers. You go, he's done. <laughs> I said no for him. Those big, um, those big boobies. Um, there was this, uh, there was this trans um, golfer. She was a trans golfer, and um, Haley Davidson, I guess, I guess was her name. And there was this rumor that because it was a man, that it was dressed as a woman, that she was like out driving all the other competitors on the thing. And, um, and, and honestly, I don't think there should be a woman out driving at all. Uh, <laughs> a sexist would say. Against women, so it's like, hey, what's going on here? 
And Greg goes, it's a complicated thing, man, because the girls feel like you shouldn't compete, but like there should be a world where everyone could compete. How do we figure it out? And I was like, what if we make a rule where um, you're not allowed to compete in women's swimming if when you win, you get an erection? <laughs> Like, if they hang a gold medal on your penis, perhaps, <laughs> you had an unfair advantage, sir. <laughs> so that was one. Um, this one I got a little heat for. I did, uh, so I don't know, this isn't even political, but I don't own a dog. I just did a joke where I pretended I had a dog, right? And dog people got angry at me. I don't even have a dog, so it's not a real dog. I'm just walking around. <laughs> and so, the story was about like positive thinking and like, does, if you do positive thinking, does your brain know you're bullshitting and it doesn't work or does it help? And so I, I was like, oh, I always just try to spit things positive. Like the other day, my girlfriend said, she goes, oh, I got bad news. We gotta put our dog to sleep. And I go, well, he already sleeps 20 hours a day. What's going on? <laughs> Keep in mind, the dog is not real. <laughs> if I close my eyes, he's playing fetch. He's uh, having a great time. <laughs> people, got, people got mad at that one. Um, <laughs> I do get scared of technology, I think. I wonder, if we'll go to, I wonder if we'll go to Mars. I don't know if we'll go to Mars. Anybody know how far, um, this is crazy. Anybody know how far it is to go to Mars, how long the flight would take? It would, it would take it would take uh, it would take seven months. They said, "Can you imagine?" Like I flew here and was like, "Fuck, this sucks!" Right? Like, can you imagine? <laughs> for Alaska, it's very far. Can you imagine seven months? What if you get on the Mars flight and you and they sit you next to a crying baby? <laughs> <laughs> and you go to the flight attendant like, "I don't think I can handle this baby." Like, and they go, "Oh, don't worry, they'll grow out of it by the time we get there." <laughs> I was, on, I was on a flight recently, and uh, I'll tell you a little story. I almost didn't make it to the East Coast because there were some flight problems, and me and my girlfriend were, we were taking off from uh, LaGuardia. We started the tour in um, Nashville, and we we're taking off, and they go, we get into the air, and they go, the, they go we're, to, we're going back. One of the engines isn't working. That's a true story. And I was thinking, maybe they could have waited to tell us that. <laughs> Until we landed safely on the ground. I'm not against you guys turning around, but perhaps you can keep that shit to yourself, right? <laughs> like, I would have just waited one minute. He could have been like, oh, I forgot something. <laughs> I told this idiot that we were freaking out. We were absolutely freaking out. And um, so we landed, and then I, I really wanted, like, they, the, those flights, I won't say the airline, but they got ready, they stopped flying for the day. And I was like, I'm stopping it, but you're going to have to cancel your tour. If I don't want to cancel it, then I'm going to get there. So I go on my phone, and the only flight that I could get that would get me to start off on this tour, it was uh, Spirit Airlines, right? <laughs> and I've heard a lot of stuff about Spirit Airlines, but I go, I got to make it there. I got I to do it, you know? And what was weird is it was, it was that day, and I went up and I go, how much for a ticket to Nashville? that leaves in like an hour. And they go, $120. I go, that's like not a lot of money, right? To leave last minute. But you know where they get you? All the little fees. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what they do, because it goes 120 and the guy goes, yeah, now, are, are you gonna wanna sit down? <laughs> it ended up being like 300 bucks. I paid $30 to uncross my arms. <laughs> I honestly can't believe we made it. They don't, I don't think they hire the best, the best people. At one point, the, the pilot was like, we're going to be flying at about, what do you guys think? <laughs> I don't like when the pilot tells me how high they're going. How high they're going. I, don't, I feel like I don't need to be part of it. <laughs> like, we're going to be flying at about 10,000 feet. You, get, you know what? You guys just do everything straight. <laughs> don't include me, you know? If I got to say it, I would say just above the mountains. That'd be great for me. Whatever the mountains are, plus maybe two feet, just to be safe. You guys, I feel like you can kind of like do that on your own. You don't need my input. I think though, I heard this country song, and the guy was saying, um, he was like, "Oh, I, I, climb, I love you so much. I climb a mountain for you." And I was like, I feel like his girlfriend should be like, "You, you don't have to." <laughs> Like, thank you for offering, but there's no reason for you to die climbing a mountain. 
<laughs> another guy in another country goes on. He goes, I would swim across an ocean for you. And again, I feel like his significant other should go, hey, there's no reason for you to fucking drown <laughs> to prove your love to me. I've seen you struggle in the bathtub. I'm just saying, <laughs> I don't think there's a need for it. But I think there should be another, I wish there was a country song, because honestly, you guys, I'm here. I, I, I love you so much, I would fly Spirit Airlines for you. That's how much I love you. <laughs> Something. Um, I heard a guy on the flight, he was in front of me, he was trying to convince his, it was either his wife or his girlfriend, he was trying to convince her to join the Mile High Club. You guys know what that is? Where you like sleep together in the back. And I was like, man, this guy, this guy's like a, like a badass, man. Like, this guy has had so much earth sex that he's like, you know what, I'm going to take it up a notch. And I got to have sex on an airplane. That is a, like, I, I, ju I just want to be in the Mattress High Club. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to think what other ways I got in trouble for. Oh, this one I got in trouble for. I was talking about um, always a bit of a sensitive subject. They were talking about religion and sports, and if you're of a certain religious, you know, affiliation, should the coach be able to like lead a prayer if everybody's not on board? Like, what should be able to do? And Greg was saying, "What do you think about this prayer in sports?" And I do. You know, I'm a big fan of prayer in sports. Like, I, I was a, I was a wrestler for a really long time in high school and college. And I would pray before every single wrestling meet. You know, I'd be like, please, no get direction. Oh man, one of these kind of old ones. But remember, remember Hunter's laptop, man. What a crazy story. You know, they, you know how we use this? It's unbelievable, really. You guys probably don't know the story because you're, you're a crowd that would be educated on that story. But a lot of people don't know the reason we even had Hunter's laptop is because he took it to get it fixed. It's just a regular laptop place. He took it to like a kiosk in the Providence Mall or something. That is 100% true. He took it to like, you, you break it, we leak it. It's a wild story that he would do that. that he would it's just unbelievable. I was surprised they didn't find anything. I would have thought it would be stuck shut, but they were able to. Uh, <laughs> they were able to open it. It had like a, like a visual ID thing. It, it could be opened by anyone with a crack pipe in their mouth. <laughs> this might be a little bit petty, but have you guys seen Hunter buy him lately? I feel like he looked pretty good five years ago. I've seen all his movies. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Penis than I would have expected, honestly. But um, he's not he's not doing good. Hunter, Hunter Biden is aging like like an organic Costco blueberry. You ever go to Costco and get blue, blueberries? They don't last long enough. You know, it's very upsetting. Sometimes your blueberries are moldy by the time that guy highlights your receipt. They're all messed up. <laughs> I bought some the other day, and I looked at the expiration date, and it was like 10, 9, 8, 7, 10. Ah! I'm saying they don't last very long. This is gonna, you, somebody might be upset. This is upset me when I heard it. Did you guys know that Hunter Biden gets an allowance every week? I don't know how old he is. He's too old to get an allowance, right? He's, he gets $10,000 a week from Joe. Can you believe it? It makes my stomach hurt, honestly. Because imagine what his life is like. It'd be like, you know, Joe's over his house, and he's like, hey, Dad, it's Monday, can I have my allowance? And Joe Biden gives him $10,000 in cash, right? And then, you know, Hunter leaves for a minute, comes back, and goes, hey, Dad, it's Monday, can I have my allowance? <laughs> Joe Biden, just that, I'll miss that, but it was so, I know he was ruining the country, but I got some good material. <laughs> I got some good, he's falling apart, you guys, I don't know if you saw, there was a video of him, he's got one of those things that goes up the railing at the stairway, and where you sit in it, and it, yeah, he's, he's got a chair force one in his house, he's got a chair. <laughs> Did 
they stopped letting him go to military briefings. Did you hear that ever since it, Kamala's kind of taken over? Joe Biden, the actual president, is no longer allowed to attend military briefings. That is true. Isn't that crazy? I guess uh, every time somebody says F-15, he yells bingo. And <laughs> Before Hunter was into whatever he's into, where he was just a dad, right? Maybe he was out in front of his house, you know, teaching Hunter to fall off a bike or just like any other bike. I'm gonna miss him. What was that? Hot shot. Dude, there's so many good ones. You know what you know what you know he just made me think of? My friend and I, we were talking on the phone a couple months ago, and he goes, he goes, what's your favorite time Biden fell? <laughs> and I was like really thinking about it. And I was thinking about, isn't it crazy? He's got to be the only president in history where you could have a favorite fall. As I thought about it, I was like, man, I really got a couple that are flying for first place. I like when he fell over the sandbags. I just thought that was kind of nice. Kind of came out of nowhere. It's not like sandbags are moving around. You know? I enjoyed the bicycle, the bike lines, because the best part of the bicycle fall was that he was attached. He was he was clipped in, as they say. That's why that was so memorable. His feet were in shoes that were attached to the bicycle. That's why when he pulled up to that reporter and she was like, Joe, you have a good bike ride? He was like, Yeah, we had a great time, and then we uh, was running around and like, and he just slowly cascaded into the ground. And then they helped him up and he went the other way and just went away. That was really something. You know what, what I, I feel a video that didn't get a lot of attention that I enjoyed was I like the one, there's a video from way back where it's Biden just putting on, he's putting on a suit jacket for like four hours. <laughs> he's got one arm in the suit jacket and no one's helping him. And he's like, I'm right over there, guys. I mean, it's real quick right here. There's a little over there. And then, uh, stay right there. I'll be right back and then we uh, Come on right back. Here we go. Dude, if no one had helped him, he would still be spinning around right now. Here we go. That's how inertia works. We're going to miss, miss some of that comedy. We're going to miss some of it. Um, we do have Kamala, though, which gives us some. A little bit of comedy we have. Uh, if I was, um, some of her interviews, you guys, some of the way they read them, I don't know, CNN is rewriting headlines, did you see all that shit? Like they were actually taking out advertisements that made it seem like the headlines were different. These are already pro Kamala articles, but they want to be even more pro, they were bullshitting, changing the headlines. And the only thing I was thinking was, I could use someone who rewrites who rewrites headlines, you know, as, as a comedian, I could use, you know. Like say one of my shows gets canceled, you know, they could they'd be like, Jamie Lisso does not disappoint. <laughs> Those jokes don't work as well when you're doing having a good show. They don't make as much sense. She, um, you know what I feel like there's a lack of with the Kamala interviews? I feel like there's a lack of the follow-up question. That's what we need. Sometimes she's allowed to say the craziest shit. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no. Remember the time she was like, oh, it's a moment in time and culture within the moment of the culture's time. <laughs> If I was the interviewer, I'd be like, can I ask you one quick uh, follow-up? What in the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Seriously, what are you talking about? <laughs> we'll have to see what happens. We'll have to see what happens. So listen, after the show, if anybody here, you guys made me so happy by, I don't know, you know, parts of the country, I don't know if, if I'm supposed to go. <laughs> <laughs> And they go, they go to me, do you want to do a show in Providence? And I go, do they want me there? Do they want me there?
So if anybody wants to take a picture, I'll stay until every single person gets a picture. If that's cool. You guys can do it. And if you have a t-shirt, I really want to go kind of crazy tour for the kind of running out, but I got some left. Uh, I just saw a t-shirt. This is uh, the look I give on Guffald after a joke is bombing. That's what I look like. And, uh, it says Jamie on there. I am a little person if you want me. And um, all of the proceeds from every single shirt, uh, all joking aside, goes towards some kids that would otherwise be neglected. They call it child support. And it is, uh, Show. This is my last show on my East Coast tour. It was the very best one by far. And, uh,